Well, we are in the last uh, sermon on the book of Joshua. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 24. And uh, the, probably the most familiar part of Joshua chapter 24 is the last part of verse 15. Many times if you would buy a house or you'd visit somebody's house, there would be a, a banner or a poster or some type of a cutout of this little phrase. As far as for me and my house, what will we do? Serve, Serve the Lord. Everybody has that. Everybody knows that. Everybody that uh, you see uh, that on coffee cups, you see that on banners. But that little phrase has so much significance to it. We can all say, as far as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And it sounds so powerful and it sounds so spiritual. But man, there's some choices behind that. There's some work behind that. Because today, your choices, listen to this, your choices today determines your destiny tomorrow. Your choices today determines your destiny tomorrow. We've all had choices to make. Many of us have made very wise choices in some areas and very unwise church choices in other areas. Somebody give me an amen. Sometimes we feel like most of our choices are unwise. Sometimes we think these little choices here really have no significance within my future. But then we find out the very small little decisions and choices that we make impact us drastically. The outcome of our life, our family, and our future could be determined on a choice that we have made without thought. And the influence and the power of that choice can be very damaging. So when we look at this, scripture today, we're not taking this little phrase. We're going to look at this entirety of what Joshua is saying. Joshua is almost dying. He's 110 years old. He has witnessed the power of God in many different occasions. He has called the, tr the leaders of Israel in. And he was talking to them and told them, he goes, listen, let's, let's look at what God has done. God delivered us out of the Egyptians God put us into this promised land. Oh, I'm sure that we worried and wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, but God provided. And then God took us over the Jordan. We set, a, we set a stone of remembrance that God provided us across that Jordan. And then we conquered Jericho. And then we hired the entire promised land. The giants that were inhabiting the land are all out of the way. God has taken over for us. But in the midst of that, in the midst of what God has done for them, there are some that did not worship the God of Israel. They, they enjoyed the prosperity. They enjoyed what God had done. But sometimes out of familiarity, you lose focus of what God has done in our life. And you make small choices. And sometimes those choices that we make can be so easy to make, but so difficult to see the damage and effects of that choice. And some of the tribes did not follow after the God of Israel. So Joshua on his deathbed says this in Joshua chapter 24. Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil for you, to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the God of the Amorites whose land you dwell. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it for us that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us out and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt and of the house of bondage. Who did those great signs and sights and preserved us all the way that when we went among all the people through whom we passed? And the Lord drove up from all of the people, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land, and also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But listen to verse 19. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is holy and he is a jealous God. He will not forgive your trespasses nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do, good, do harm 
and consume you after he has done good to you. Joshua has given them the hard warning. He said, listen, guys, you've seen what God has done. You've seen what God can do. And you have provided, he has provided for us all the way through. And they said, yeah, we see that and, and we want to serve God. And Joshua said this, there's two things. God is holy and God is jealous. God is jealous. What, what do you mean by jealous? God cannot bless a people, a person, or a home that puts something or another God over him. It's legitimate jealousy. Those things may be good things. Our job may be a good thing. Our resources are good things. Our families are good things. But if anything that we put above God, God cannot bless. He is a jealous God. Jealousy, when we think of jealousy, we think of jealousy as a very negative thing. That somebody is jealous, he's, he's controlling, he's powerful, he's manipulative. Jealousy is, is not allowing something to go in front of. And God is a very jealous God. And he's saying, he's saying, if you put God where he needs to be, God can bless everything within your life. He is a jealous God. So when you say, for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord, that means for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. It doesn't mean for me and my house, we're going to go to church. It doesn't mean for me and my house, we're going to go to Sunday school. It says for me and my house, we are going to serve. That means serving, not the church. You're going to serve the Lord. How do you serve the Lord? You first serve the Lord by first consecrating your heart and say, where can I go? What can I do? How can I serve? What is more important than anything that I have? I want to give it to God. I, we give our babies to God. We ask God to bless our children. We ask God to bless our homes. We ask God to bless our lives. Everything about us has to be, I'm going to serve. I want to serve. I want to do whatever it takes to bring glory and honor to God's name. In our society, when it's going to be dark, we have to serve the Lord. We have to stand in the face of adversity and serve. For me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Listen to this. Thoughts create action. Actions create habit. Habits create character, and character creates a destiny. It has to start with our thoughts. Our thoughts. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Serve is action. It's not just we're going to raise our hands and worship his name. It's not that we're just going to come to church. We have to find out a way that God wants us to serve. The greatest, most humbling aspect of worship is service. When somebody serves. When somebody says, it's not my thing, but I want to serve God. Somebody is in need. I want to serve them. It's not about giving to them. It's about serving them. When you love something such as God, you will serve him and love him above everything else. So let me give you some thoughts. The first thought is an honest choice. An honest choice. Dissecting this phrase, verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods of your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. An honest choice. It means every one of us. Every one of us have to make the decision whether we are going to serve God. Not just come to church. Not just sing. Serve. Serve. Give my heart and my life to God. It's an honest choice. You have other choices. But it says, now therefore fear the Lord. Serve him with sincerity, with wholeheartedness and in truth. And put away the other gods which your father served, whether your dad, whether your mother, whether your brother, whether your uncle, if they were preachers, deacons in a church, it makes no difference. What makes a difference? Serve yourself, our God. We cannot go on our second generation's faith. 
Just because your mom or your dad came to church, just because they were baptized, just because they were deacons, just because they were members of a church, doesn't mean that you're in that church. There are denominations that if your parents were um, brought up in the church, then you automatically become a different denomination. Such as if you were, if you were Catholic and your parents grew up Catholic, you grew up Catholic for the rest of your life, you assume that you are Catholic because that's how the generation happens. What Christianity is, is Christianity is not a denomination. Christianity is a decision that you have that I accept Jesus Christ for my Lord and my Savior. Makes no difference what church I went to, makes no difference where I came from and what I have done. What makes a difference, do I have faith in Jesus Christ? It has to be an honest choice. Now therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him with sincerity and in truth. Be honest with yourself. I think the greatest thing that we could do when we make decisions is honestly evaluate what I am doing. It's a major choice. And we have to ask God for direction. Ask God to do what he needs to do. In James chapter 1 verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. When we don't know what to do, the first thing that we need to do is we just need to ask God. Say, what do I need to do here? Allow him to have an honest choice within our hearts. And then there's some possible choices. There are some possible choices. In verse 15, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served or on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land that you dwell. And if it seems evil, if it seems like you don't want to do it, if, if it seems like you do not want to serve and worship God, don't. Serve whoever you want. Worship whoever you want. I cannot make you worship. I cannot make you serve. And if it says, if it seems evil, if it seems wrong in your eyes to serve God, pick and choose who you want to serve. It makes no difference. You are going to have to hold account to who you serve. But for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. How can he say that? Joshua, just a few years earlier, was face to face with Jesus, the captain of the army of the Lord. And he fell on his face before God because he saw who God was. He witnessed the power of God. And once we witness the power of God and how God handles different things, we can worship him and we can serve him because we've experienced him. And sometimes we do not worship God and we do not serve God because we've never experienced God. We've never made those decisions to follow after God. When it says for me and my house, that is a decision that it takes work. It's not just gonna happen by happenstance. It's not just gonna happen, kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna love God because they had that chance. We have to intentionally serve God, intentionally. That means we have to, on purpose, put into practice the things that others will see. Service, service, humility, service. See, I think the modern church today, they go to church service. They sing, they hear some sermons, they may read some scriptures, and they said we were in church service today. They put in the time. They put in what the requirement was in order to do what God wanted them to do. And see, I think so often when the church is so focused on the Sunday morning aspect of worship, they lose sight of exactly what God wants them to do. Choose for yourself whom you will serve. Whom you will serve. It didn't say who you're going to worship. It's an act of service. There's possible services. You can choose who your father served. You could serve another country's God. Or you could serve the God that provided for you and loved you and took care of you. And in our mindset, you can do this in our culture today. Whom will you serve? Will you serve the Lord that died on the cross and forgave you of your sins and is going to give you eternal life in heaven because of your sacrifice for him and because of what he has done for you? Or are you going to serve other religions? Or are you going to serve other things, whether it is your resources or things that you hold dear to? God is a jealous God, and he cannot bless those things that are above him. 
Yeah, we use this illustration a lot. It's not like the umbrella. That if, if God is holding the umbrella and the storms of life are coming down and it's a power and it's lightning and rain and God is right in front of us and, and God is over us and wherever God's umbrella is is going to be protected and God's will is going to protect those that are under his will. But if we ever get outside of God's will, if we ever do things that God says, I want you here, but I don't want to do this, so I'm going to move over here, the umbrella of God's protection cannot go where his will is not. Then God's will, God's protection, is not going to take care of us. So there are some possible choices. But then there's a personal choice. This personal choice. And I think this is where, when we talk about coffee cup theology, this, this phrase is probably in everyone's home, this phrase, everyone has heard, but as far as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He's talking to the leaders. He's divvying out the land. You're going to do this, and you're going to have this, and you can go here. And he just says, guys, you, you're going to make a choice for yourself, and I cannot dictate who you serve and how you serve. All I can tell you is what I have done. And he said, for me, personal, and for my house, the guy's 110 years old. His kids are already raised and gone. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Sometimes that leadership says, I have worshiped my Lord. I have served my Lord. My family has watched me worship the Lord, has watched me serve the Lord. And by we can say monkey see, monkey do is what these kids, what my kids will want to do. When God has blessed me and God has honored me and I have served him and God has taken care of me just like the children of Israel, God has blessed them above measure, took care of them with everything that they had. Sometimes it's a personal choice, but that personal choice is a very difficult choice because it doesn't just happen. It's a choice that takes work. It's a choice that when your children are babies, when our life is falling apart, can we be honest with them about the things of life that we have to allow God to work in? Sometimes, sometimes it's difficult. We just, yesterday we had the funeral service for Lisa's mom and dad. And they have five little grandbabies and we're sitting here. And um, the, the thing about, in times of tragedy, whom you call on is sometimes teaching four, five, ten-year-old kids whom to call on. Sometimes in my generation, my parents' generation, I can handle this. I don't have to cry. I don't have to show emotion. I don't have to tell my kids I love them. They know it. Well, you know what? In times of calamity, in times of problems, they need to see that I am a broken man. They need to see that I can pray. They need to see it's okay to allow God to work within my life. There's times in my life that I need God. Sometimes we just need to take it personal. And it's a personal choice. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I love that. It's hard. It's hard. There's days I don't want to serve. There's days that say, oh, man, I don't want to go do this. There's opportunities in front of us. Say, ah, oh, can somebody else do that? No. Sometimes we must serve the Lord. And we serve the Lord in many different areas. It's not, we have to get our mindset outside of the church walls and say, well, I can serve God here, or I can serve God in the music, or I can serve God in the nursery. Serving God is not serving the church. Serving God is serving him wherever you are. You can serve him at work. You can serve him at school. You can serve him at the grocery store, at the gas station. Serving God is just being who God wants you to be under his protection. Be the witness. Be the Christian. Be the character that God wants you to be. And give God the glory and the honor and the testimony. And God will do this. And he does it every day that we ask him, Lord, give me an opportunity to be your feet and to be your vessel and to speak your name. And when we get on our face before God in the morning and God at night and say, Lord, all I want to do today is I want to bring glory and honor to you. I want to serve, I want to love, and I want to communicate God. And you ask God to do that, you just wait for the door of opportunity. The opportunity of a lifetime can stand right in front of you when we are prepared and ready to honor. 
But it is a personal choice. You don't have to. You are going to heaven if you know Jesus Christ. You are going to heaven whether you serve him or not. You're going to heaven because Jesus died on the cross for your sins. The greatest growth of maturity within our life is when we know we don't have to, we get to. Jesus wants to use me. God wants to use me in a way to point other people to him. That is the greatest blessing that you could ever have. But then the last one, it's the right choice. It's the right choice. So the people answered and said, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord and to serve other gods. Sometimes Joshua is communicating and he says, let me tell you what God has done. And he says, far be it. We would be crazy if we do not serve the God that has protected us and provided for us. But sometimes the right choice is very difficult. Far be it from us to serve other gods. When we make the right choice, we have to have a purpose within our soul and a purpose within our life. Because he said this. He said, guys, it's going to be hard to do. I know you want to. I know you want to serve God. I know that you see what God has done within our life and he has protected us and he's given us everything that we possibly need. He provided everything for us. And he said, but listen, you can't just serve God. You can't just have lip service. He said, because God is two things. God is two things. First, he's holy. We've gone over this in Joshua twice, once in Exodus and once in Joshua. When Jesus, when, when Moses saw the burning bush, he fell on his face before God. He said, take off your sandals because where you are standing is holy ground. In other words, you're in the presence of God. Face to face with God. God is holy. We cannot play with holiness. The word of God, God's presence is holy. So when we talk to God, we are talking to a holy God, a presence that wants our worship. And then he is jealous. Not only is holy, he is jealous. When we make the right choice, what we need to do is understand that I need to serve him, which means I'm going to serve him. I'm not going to serve myself. I'm not going to get something out of it. I am going to serve God. However that is, whatever that is, whenever, if we serve to get, we're serving ourselves. But when we serve to give, we're serving God. When we serve to give, to give hope, to give encouragement, to help somebody out, when we serve, not to get anything out of it, but just say, I'm his vessel. What do you want me to do? And when we can do that, then God is saying, now you're putting me where I need to be. Now I'm a holy God. I'm a jealous God. And now you're my child. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to live for him. And it's the right choice. It's the right choice to honor him in every aspect of our life. You know, in life, there are all kinds of different roads that we travel. And sometimes those roads are very difficult. And sometimes the choices that we make, decisions that we make on where to go and how to get there can be very difficult. How many of you have to use GPS if you travel someplace? I mean, I, I mean I'd be lost. In, in, I'd drive to Dallas. I'd get lost within five turns. I have to, it has to tell me exactly what to do. I'm just, I can look at a map, but I need to have GPS. They didn't have GPS back in the day. But GPS helps us out drastically because roads can get very confusing. Our journey of life can get very confusing. Sometimes we think we need to take a left, but God wants us to take a right. And how do we know what to do and how to get there without God's leadership and God's love and God's protection? How we, the church, the Christians, how we know is we need to get on our face before God. We need to honor him with our life and say, what choice do you want me to make? It may be as simple as where you're going to school, where you're going to eat dinner, who you're going to marry, where you're going to live. Some choices that are very simple or choices that are very large. 
God wants you to be part of every choice. And he wants to be involved in every choice. Because we used this last yesterday in, in the United States of America, the highway system that started back in 1950. They looked at the highway system and they started, let's, let's try to take the easiest path that we could. So they dynamited some of the big hills and they filled in some of the valleys. But sooner or later they found out that this country is very difficult. And so the highway system goes up mountains and it goes down some valleys. It goes across deserts and it goes beside streams. It goes across bridges and it goes through water. The highway system is very diverse. And sometimes that highway system gets potholes. Sometimes during the midst of storms, sometimes that highway system gets flooded out. Sometimes you can go down the highway and sometimes you cannot. In our life, the highway that we're taking is very difficult. The greatest thing that the highway system does, it gives us a path to take. A path. We don't have to go off-road. We can stay on that path. And that path that we're on in the highway system gives us direction. It gives us road maps. It gives us signage. But in our spiritual life, the road that we're on has to be lit by God's word and God's power. So when you're saying, what do I do? What choices do I make? Your choice that you have to make, the decisions that you have to make in life, simple and large, they have to be made under prayer. And when you get up from that prayer, you say, Lord, I need guidance. I need help. Because when we make improper choices in any area of our life, it changes the destiny of our direction into our future. I could give you testimony after testimony of, of people that say, ah, oh, I wish I could do that over. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish we'd have done this. My life is different. My life has, needs, it, it, it has changed because of that decision. What I'm asking the church to do, for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. It's a choice. It's a decision. When you put your decisions based on God's word, things start to be brighter. Life starts to be easier because God is starting to illuminate the path in front of you. So we all have choices to make. It may be small right now, but that choice may be gigantic. The choices that you may be facing right now could be enormous to a point that you have no idea what to do and you don't even know how you're going to face it. And it could be so overwhelming that you haven't told a soul because you're embarrassed about a decision. Or you're embarrassed about something that you have to do. You have to do this. And how you do it is between you and God. We must serve God. And how we serve God is humbly go before him. And allow him to make our paths straight. Allow him to make our choices clear. And when we have made a mistake and we've made unwise choices, give them back to God. Let God, I, I goofed that one up. I took the wrong turn on that one. I am sorry, Lord. Allow him to heal you, forgive you, and allow him to put you on the right path. He can do it, and he does it every day. But he never makes us do it. He allows us the opportunity to ask him and then he will change our direction. So the choices that you make, listen to his thoughts, create action. Actions create habit. Habits create character and character creates a destiny. Our thoughts create actions. We will never do what God wants us to do until we purposely think about the outcome of those choices. Thoughts create action. I would say, what are you thinking about right now? The right answer would be the decision I have to make. Many of you have given your life to Christ. That's the greatest decision that you could ever make. Many of you know that you're dying and you're going to go to heaven. Praise God. 
There's some of us that those decisions are not quite that easy. Some of us are holding on to, to sin. Some of us are holding on to some things that are holding us back from following God and to serve God. And to say, I want to serve God for me and my house means I'm going to have to give something up or I'm going to have to do something different. You will never be able to do that without God's power. So I'm going to ask our church to pray. We're going to have an invitation. I'm going to ask Justin to make his way up. Uh, an invitation is this. I had a guy come into church and said, why don't you have those, those things that you do when people come down and, and pray? You mean an invitation? He goes, yeah, I don't want to come down, but I think it's good that people come down and pray. I said, well, it would be good if everybody came down to pray. But you know what? An invitation is not just having somebody come down to pray. An invitation is an opportunity for us to come to the altar and talk to God. Do you have to come to the altar? No. You don't have to come to the altar. What the altar is, you ready for this? It's a sign of humility that the decision that I'm making, the prayer that I'm offering up is not about me and anyone else. I could care less what anybody thinks about me. I could care less whether they think I'm weak or I'm going through a problem or I need this or I need that. A prayer at the altar means I care about one thing. I care about talking to God. And I need God more than I need somebody else's opinion about anything. And when I can pray to God and God can hear my prayer at the altar, I can get up and I can say, I met with God today. I didn't just hear a sermon. I didn't just sing songs. I met with God. And there's not a greater thing that you could do upon the earth is setting, I met with God. Because God is holy. God is just. And God is jealous. But when God hears our prayers, what he does, he opens up his heart. He wraps his arms around us. And he says, let me give you the very desires of your heart.